friends and welcome back to 155 books my name is Shannon and today I'm going to be doing a semi book review semi personal story around the book Digital Minimalism by Cal Newport so I read this book or listened to it on audiobook back in March and minimalism is something that I've always sort of had an interest in something that um, I've always tried to do on a sort of I guess non-serious basis I am a very tidy person I do like to do um, clear outs every sort of season and also more recently I have been drawn into sort of the idea of wanting to cut back digitally so spending less time on my phone on social media over the years I've kind of realized I really don't like certain social media sites and in the last five years I deleted my Facebook and then in the last year and a half I deleted my Twitter so really the only things I have left are YouTube which is one of the only sites I'm kind of okay with um, and Instagram which I have a very love-hate relationship with so when I came across this book <laughs> I thought you know what this is actually something that I think I'm going to really enjoy and it has changed my life. So in my most recent past, present, future video I talked about Deep Work by Cal Newport because I'm currently reading slash listening to that on audiobook after obviously enjoying this one so much and I talked about how with his non-fiction books he does this really impressive thing of splitting it into two sections. So the first part is on the foundations of the subject he's talking about and the second part is on the practices you can do in order to be a digital minimalist um, and I feel like it's a really smart way of helping the reader sort of set up and understand the reasons why they are then going to go on to do the practices when you get to part two so like I say the foundations lays out the why you're doing this and the practices then are how to do that and I think it makes it better because by the time you get to the how knowing your why is very important. So in the first section of this in the foundations part, Cal Newport very clearly explains why it is important. The first thing that you should do before you do any of the practices is a 30 day digital detox. And like I say, he explains the reason why for that, because then you can basically get rid of everything digitally that you do not have to use for at least 30 days before then realising how you can actually use technology to your advantage and how you can basically reclaim your leisure life and do all these other things that technology is taking you away from. Um, and like I say, he explains that in the practices part. So after devouring this in March, I knew immediately that I wanted to do the 30 day digital detox in April. I wasn't going to hang around and wait. Like I say, it really got my brain thinking and I was like yes this is something that I think I've wanted to do for a really long time anyway and when I tell you it was a journey but one of the best ones I've been on for a very long time. For the rest of this video I'm going to talk about my own personal experience of the 30 day digital detox including what my digital detox included um, and split it into each week um, of the four weeks that I did it and how things sort of changed through those four weeks and obviously end by concluding and wrapping up on what the 30 day digital detox taught me and how it has changed my life after. So what did my digital detox include? In Digital Minimalism, Cal Newport makes it very clear that when you do this 30 day digital detox to really challenge yourself don't sort of say to yourself oh yeah I can do it but I'll allow basically half of these technologies under the umbrella of I have to use them every day because I think a lot of the time we come up with excuses because we're scared maybe of what will happen if you know we don't use Instagram for a month like the people that I interact with on Instagram like, will I lose that friendship? Will I upset people if I don't reply to them? Things like that. So you really have to sort of get rid of all of that and say, I'm going to take this seriously. So that is what I did. <laughs> so I did a complete clear out of 
loads of apps from my mobile phone. That was like one of the first things I did. So obviously I got rid of Instagram, which is like the only social media app I really have on there. Um, I got rid of Spotify. So I wasn't allowed to use Spotify on any device for the whole of the 30 days. I got rid of Goodreads from my phone and also said to myself I wasn't allowed to use Goodreads for the whole of April. I wasn't allowed to read or watch the news for the whole of April. And another really, really big one was no TV for the whole of April. Um, and again, a few other things like not really allowing myself to just Google random things that weren't sort of like imperative to my life. So I'm now going to go into the things I did allow and some exceptions um, to kind of explain how I did still sort of function <laughs> through the whole of April. Um, because again, Cal Newport explains sometimes you do have to give yourself replacement for the things that you are removing from your life. So you don't obviously go absolutely crazy. Um, so I'm going to, like I say, explain the things I allowed, the exceptions, and then also go into the list I made of things I could do throughout the whole of April so I didn't go stir crazy. After a lot of deliberation, the only thing I allowed myself to keep that maybe I also could have stopped myself from using was Audible. And I can't really explain why. I think it's because obviously one of the big parts of my digital detox was that I know I was going to be reading a lot, but I didn't want to read so much that I got sick of it. So I wanted to have that different format of reading. So that's why I allowed myself to keep Audible. Um, I kept YouTube, but only for using it for the purposes of things like yoga. So yoga with Adrian videos, meditation videos. So sort of like mindfulness practices and that was it. I also allowed myself, again this was a recommendation from Cal Newport, um, to watch TV, movies, things like that with other people. So for example uh, myself and my boyfriend on a weekend or whatever would watch a movie together um, and that is something I really enjoyed. I also allowed myself to watch films or TV series I had on DVD because I have a lot of films on DVD that I've bought on DVD that I just have sat there, like very old ones that I've never watched. So I thought I would give myself the chance to maybe finally watch those. So ones, for instance, that aren't on streaming services um, to sit down and spend some time just, just watching those. And lastly, the only other website I was allowed to use or websites I was allowed to use were searching for recipes because obviously throughout April I spent a lot of time cooking, um, which is something I was really happy about. And obviously I get a lot of my recipes online. Um, so again, that was kind of one of the only exceptions. Moving on to the list of activities I made that I could keep reverting back to. And that list included things like, for instance, baking, cooking, um, specific ideas like hosting an afternoon tea, um, which I did end up doing for me and my mum around the time of my birthday or before before my birthday, so the end of April, doing a Greek meze type situation for my boyfriend one night when he came home from work and I did that as well and the food was amazing and I was really, I really enjoyed cooking it all. I spent half the day in the kitchen cooking and I loved it. It was amazing. The food turned out really well and like I say, it's an idea I'd had for a really long time so it was nice to finally actually do that. Other activities included things like journaling, obviously meditating, I don't know if I already said reading, <laughs> but reading again, um, visiting the park more often, bubble baths, uh, very specific activities like watching the final Hobbit movie that I have on DVD and that I did do, again, all of these things. So like I say, whenever I was stuck with things to do, I would revert back to this list and be like, oh yeah, I can do this, which like I say, was super helpful. Now moving on to my actual experience. And like I say, I'm gonna break this down into the weeks because I felt like each week I experienced something slightly different. So starting off with week one, obviously week one, I kind of expected week one to be the hardest and it wasn't. And looking back now, I kind of see why, because obviously I was really excited. I was excited about doing this challenge. I was prepared, I was ready. 
So obviously the first few days there was that kind of initial itch of coming home from work and wanting to just sit down and put the TV on um, and getting out of those kind of habits. Um, but after like the first two days, it wasn't a problem. Um, and I already was started started doing the things that I'd been saying for a really long time I'd want, I wanted to do. For instance, read more. I loved it. I was coming in from work, sitting down, reading. I read Lady Midnight in a week and I really enjoyed reading. <laughs> um, I also noticed that I was doing my morning and evening routines more often. Again, that didn't feel like a chore. I was enjoying it. So sort of like just general self-care just became what I automatically did instead of, like I say, scrolling on my phone, watching TV, things like that. And also bubble baths. I used to love having a bath and then I kind of got out of the habit of doing that to the point where I only really did it when my like mental health got really bad and it was a way of like pulling myself back because it would always make me feel better so doing it in a preventative or just because I want to way again amazing some of the best baths I've had in a really long time um, and it's something so simple but something again it's just enjoying those little things in life again that when you're distracted by like digital things you kind of forget to enjoy those things then in week two was when I started to do a lot more sort of like personal digging if that makes sense I was journaling a lot more and I think by week two um because I would sort of removed all of the digital distractions from my life my brain started sort of like whirling and uncovering the things I'd been distracting myself from so obviously I was journaling to sort of get all of that out of my head and find out what was going on. It also made me realise what I actually wanted from life, which I know seems crazy, but I think one of the big things about social media, especially Instagram, you're constantly taking in what other people are doing. But again, it's the their best parts, their highlight reel. And I was constantly being like, why am I not doing that? Or thinking I would have a more highly valued life, I would be happier if I was doing what other people were doing and not making any time to sort of ask myself what do I want from life, what do I want to be doing and then I kind of realised I don't want to do what other people are doing, <laughs> that won't add value to my life, what will add value to my life are the things that I myself value, so like high value activities, high value people and it was really eye-opening um, and then obviously you stop worrying about other people and what other people are doing um, and start making plans to do the things that you actually want to do. Another thing that started happening in week two was that I became more observant of myself in the present moment and of what I was feeling and my emotions to the point where I was sort of like emotionally checking myself if that makes sense. I guess that's what people call like self-regulating your emotions um, and it's something I've always wanted to do so that learning how to do that just by week two again I was very impressed with myself that that would happen that was something that happened quite quickly and then week three happened so I think week three inevitably would have happened anyway and in a way I'm very glad that it did um, but week three was when everything just imploded or exploded um, <laughs> and again like I say it's kind of part of the healing journey when you start to heal there's always that moment where you start you start uncovering all these emotions and then you get to the core of the issue and you're like wow I didn't realize I was distracting myself from a lot of things that I wasn't happy with in my life. So obviously by week three, I'd done, in week two, I'd done a lot of uncovering about myself and a lot of journaling. So during that process, obviously I had kind of slightly uncovered some of the things in my life I wasn't very really happy about. And week three, the beginning of week three, I attempted to do something about that. And it did not go well. Um, it kind of like blew up in my face and just made me 
realise more, I guess, about what I wanted and the things I needed to change in my life. I will mention it was like work related and career related. And like I say, I kind of raised these issues and it wasn't dealt with in the best way or in the way that I expected it to be or I didn't get the support I kind of needed at that time. And like I say, week three then also showed me when I wasn't okay, what some of my coping mechanisms usually would be. For instance, scrolling through Instagram. So I would say week three was when things started to fall apart in terms of I was breaking some of the rules. So I did spend one night just like I say, scrolling through Instagram, watching a lot of like ASMR videos, which in a way kind of did help me, but I needed a distraction a little bit from how I was feeling or I just would have like spiraled. <laughs> but thankfully that did kind of show me that I did need more like a few more healthy coping mechanisms and I managed to turn those around really quickly and recovered quicker than I normally would. So for example, I was swimming a lot more. Swimming really, really helped me. Um, again, reading, reading was always very helpful. Focusing on my hobbies, including filming videos. Um, as you will have noticed in the last couple of weeks, I've been more consistent because I've realized it's actually something I really enjoy doing and it's nice to be able to like fall back on a hobby and do something you really love doing when maybe you're not doing so great. So sort of like reframing that. Um, as before, I kind of saw my hobbies as a chore. So again, that's kind of changed. And that leads us on to week four. So week four was when I kind of gave up a little bit because I knew I was at the end. So I, for instance, one evening thought, you know what, I'm actually gonna treat myself a little bit and watch a film. Um, so I watched Scoop, I think it's called Scoop. It was on Netflix um, and it released during April, but it was one that I knew I wanted to watch anyway. Uh, Billy Piper was in it. It was about um, the Prince Andrew Newsnight scandal. And it was a very good film. However, by breaking the rules a little bit and giving in, I guess, actually taught me more than sticking to the digital detox for the whole 30 days. So after I watched Scoop, rather than just watching that one film that I wanted to watch, because I was on Netflix, I then inevitably started scrolling and ended up watching another film that was really terrible. I watched it the whole way through. The whole time I was watching it, I was like, why am I watching this? And that's like an hour and a half of my life I'm never gonna get back. And in the last week I started listening to Spotify more because obviously Taylor Swift dropped her new album. I did for the first part. So obviously when I said I wasn't allowed to listen to Spotify at all, one of the things I was allowed to do was listen to um, all of my vinyls, which again is something I really enjoyed doing. So on release day, I went to HMV and bought uh, her new album on vinyl and actually listened to it initially on vinyl, which was really interesting. But then because it's Taylor Swift, I just wanted to listen to it 24 seven and ended up, like I say, breaking my digital detox by listening to it on Spotify quite a lot. It was okay to begin with. I was like, I don't really mind this. I don't feel like it's affecting my life that much. However, very quickly I realised I was literally listening to Spotify at any second of my day that I could have, which was really unnecessary. So like when I was cleaning, getting ready, I was constantly like, oh, I need to put music on. I need to, like, I can't just be in silence. Um, so again, I realised that I was doing that and kind of stopped myself and tried to say, if I go for a walk, for instance, I have to do at least one walk in a week not listening to anything so that I can be more present. Um, so again, like I say, that kind of taught me that it's all about balance. In conclusion, or since doing the 30 day digital detox, my main takeaways and the things that have really changed in my life, um, amazingly are, I do not miss TV one bit. So going 30 days without TV, don't miss it at all. So now I don't come home and immediately put the television on. I don't sit down to eat a meal in front of the television. If I want to, for example, every now and get now and again, just watch like one episode um, of something, I'll just watch that one episode and then stop and go about my day and carry on. So I would say the biggest thing is that TV time has gone from four or five hours a day 
to less than an hour a day, which is very impressive. Another thing I do not miss is Instagram. Um, I haven't put the app back on my phone. It's still just on my desktop and maybe I'll check it once a week. I am at that point where I kind of want to delete it, but at the same time, there's a lot of photos on my personal one that I don't have. And if I get rid of my Instagram, you can't like download them or save them, uh, which is obviously they do that on purpose so that you don't delete your Instagram account. <laughs> um, and then my book one, Again, I don't really know what to do with that. Part of me wants to keep it in case I do eventually open up an Etsy store, which is something I've wanted to do for a really long time, um, because obviously I could then use it to promote um, my products. The third and maybe biggest change that I've noticed, and one thing that I thought about a lot during the 30 days, was tracking my reading. I no longer care about tracking my reading, like at all. So obviously throughout April, I didn't use Goodreads. How I used to good use Goodreads was that I would even update when I got to maybe a hundred pages of a book. And I, the one thing I noticed a lot was that by doing that, it takes you out of what you're doing. So for example, I'd be reading a book, I'd get to page a hundred and I'd be like, oh, I have to update Goodreads. And then by the time you've done that, you're on your phone, you're scrolling and you don't go back to your book for another like day or so. <laughs> Whereas by not having to think about doing that, you just read and you enjoy reading. Um, and it's the same even for the statistical side of things. So I'm still kind of unsure what I want to do going forward as like I say, I do like Goodreads in terms of having that catalog of the books I own, the books I've read. Um, but then also there's part of me that is like, why? Why am I doing that? Why do I feel like it's necessary to have that? Um, so I'm still trying to unpick my whys. Um, I did watch a video recently from Mary, from Mary Among Stories, and she has done her own personal sort of like library catalogue on Notion. And that is something maybe I would like to do just so that I've got, like I say, a catalogue of my own personal book library and make it less about tracking and reviewing my books because I don't really review books on Goodreads. It's not like people go on to Goodreads to read my reviews. Um, if I want to talk about a book, obviously I do that here. So I don't really know. I think maybe if I made the my own personal library catalogue on Notion, I probably would delete my Goodreads. So that might be something I do in the future. But as of right now, I do not care about tracking my reading. The only thing I care about is my actual reading, enjoying my reading, and like I say, talking about books here on YouTube, which is a hobby I really enjoy doing. So taking all of that into consideration, I would say since the 30 day digital detox and still trying to implement kind of what I learned in that time into my life now, there are three main things that I have noticed and I'm continuing to notice that have like really changed my life. The first one being that I don't get stressed out over like things anymore. I had got to the point where every small little thing was massively stressing me out. So the thought of doing chores, so not even doing the chores, just the thought of them, the thought of, like I say, self care, the thought of eating, the thought of picking out what I was wearing, the thought of basically anything, I got to that point where I was just stressed about every single aspect of life. I couldn't see the enjoyment in life anymore. It was just stress. Whereas now the roles have completely reversed to the point where every small little thing that used to stress me out, I actually really enjoy doing, even chores. So the things that maybe you wouldn't enjoy doing, I enjoy doing. Um, and it's just so great to feel that way again. The second thing is that I've finally been doing those things that I've been saying I wanted to do for a really long time. So there's things that like, oh, the things I want to do more of, the things I think that will make me happier, the things I enjoy doing. Small little things like sewing to obviously bigger things like a career change. So I, during April, um, I 
submitted a few job applications. I had a job interview a few weeks ago. Um, I unfortunately didn't get the job, but I still feel excited about, you know, putting things into motion to change the things I want to change in my life. And it's exciting. I believe in myself again. I just feel generally more positive and happy. And obviously that takes me on to the third and final thing. And that is that I'm just generally more excited about life, <laughs> which I guess is kind of the whole point of a digital detox. I wanted it to change my life. I wanted to limit my screen time, limit my time using digital devices sat in front of the TV so I could use that time for the things I wanted to do. And that is what I've done. And surprise, surprise, it has made a massive difference. So if like me, you've been thinking for a while that you want to come, cut back on the time you spend on social media, on your phone, like digitally, you want to use technology to the best of like to your advantage, but you don't know how to do that, I would highly recommend obviously picking up Digital Min Minimalism by Cal Newport, because as I've just explained in this very long video, <laughs> it really changed my life and I want more people to read this, take away what I got from it, implement things into their lives to, you know, get their life back, I guess. I can also guarantee this will not be the last time you hear me talk about Cal Newport. I cannot wait to read his new book, which is on slow productivity. Um, he's one of my favourite non-fiction writers now, and I'm so glad this book came into my life when it did. I want to thank you all so very much for watching this very long video, <laughs> and I would love you to comment down below what maybe you would like to cut back on in terms of digital distractions, be it a social media app, be it your phone, be it TV, be it gaming, let me know in the comments because I would love to hear from you. Thank you guys again for watching and I'll see you soon in my next video. Bye. Mm -hmm.